everyone and welcome to the woods. This is Matt from Indefensive Plants and we're doing something a little different today, taking you on a video tour. Uh, we've had about two weeks of unseasonably warm weather, which is kind of cool for a plant person like me, but it's a little weird because it's still February. Well, today got a little bit colder, so we're out seeing what we're going to find in the woods and already we're, we're catching on to some really cool botany. So join us, we're going to check it out. Now we're in what we're called now we're in what's called the central forest region. A lot of oaks, a lot of hickories, and historically this area would have been kept open by fire. As you can see, it doesn't look like a lot's been burning around here. As such, a lot of shrubs like this Japanese privet have moved their way in, and it's making things a lot more difficult for plants on the ground. Now if you've noticed, those two weeks of warm weather that we had were enough for this plant to break bud. And breaking bud means that it's leafing out. If you looked around, paid a little bit more attention to detail, you'd realize that all the plants that are breaking bud this early are what we call invasive. They don't belong here. They were brought over, in the case of this plant, as a hedgerow shrub, and they've escaped, and they're getting into woods like this. And since Native American burning has largely been suppressed, all wildfires have been suppressed, uh, a lot of these shrubs get the upper hand because fire would eventually come in and burn these away. Now, a place like this is eventually going to be restored. People are waking up to the fact that fire is a good thing, but in the meantime, shrubs like this are doing a lot of damage. All right, cool. Hey, check this out. Now I lied a little bit. Not everything that's coming up right now is invasive. In fact, down here, we've got a lot of things that were responding to those two weeks of warmth. In fact, some things are even germinating right now. It's not just coming up from rootstock. We've got gallium, we've got calinzia, calinzia verna here. A lot of seedlings, a lot coming in the next couple of weeks, and uh, things are gonna get really nice. Now, even though today was really cold and last night was definitely below freezing, these guys seem okay. They don't have the typical frost damage that you're gonna see in a lot of, uh, a lot of ornamental plants that you put outside right now, but um, that's all have to do with, that all has to do with antifreeze compounds. So these guys are pumping their leaves full of sugars. It keeps them from freezing, which keeps uh, crystal damage from happening. And then, you know, when things warm back up again, they can get going. Hardy little buggers, especially at this age, it's kind of uh, inspiring. All right, worth it, but here's something really cool. One of an old time friend of mine, one of the plants I have the most photographs of because it's obviously one of the first natives to start blooming. This is Hepatica acutiloba. I think they've actually moved it into Anemone acutiloba now. It's kind of got this evergreen foliage, although here exposed on this, uh, this little embankment here with the wind kind of ripping through the trees off the, the little river behind us. It's, it's had a rough time this winter with no snowpack to insulate it, but it's putting on quite the show already. Again, this is February. It's very weird. Um, it's a little member of the buttercup family, and it's one of the first things that early native bees have to feed on. Now this is what we call a Myrmecocorus species, it's associated with ants. After it's fertilized, which these might already actually be fertilized, it produces seeds with a little uh, fleshy lobe on them called an eliasome, and that attracts ants which come around foraging and disperse its seeds so new colonies can start. But this one's a bit of a trickster, its eliasomes are not real, they're fake, so they smell like food. They aren't actually food, so the ants just end up throwing them out, and uh, a new colony is born. It's kind of a cool plant. It's very hardy, and uh, it's just downright adorable. You can see this patch over here is quite hardy. And keep in mind, as we're filming this, the daily temperature is not much over freezing. So maybe one to two degrees centigrade, 32-ish degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, they closed up. Not a lot of bees flying around when it's this cold, but as soon as the sun comes back out and warms up a little bit, these flowers will reopen and uh, start displaying their, their goods. It's a great spring plant, one I look forward to seeing every year. It's not falling my ass now. Something really worth talking about right here. This is snow trillium, trillium nivale. It's the smallest trillium in the woods. And it's the one I was really hoping to see today. Now, even for February, this is kind of weird for it, but regardless, this is one of the earliest flowering trillium species in the woods. It's 
and I'm not kidding when I say it's small. I mean, this is a flowering adult, at least five to 10 years old at this point. And it's really not much bigger than a few, uh, few knuckles there. Really awesome little spring ephemeral plant. And they're kind of all coming up all around here in profusion. Now, I emphasize the fact that this is an old plant because it takes a long time for trillium to gain enough energy to produce a flower. In fact, for about two years, they spend their time as mostly just a germinated little seed with a cotyledon and some roots. And then a few more years putting up enough energy to produce leaves. And then finally, again, after about five to ten years, depending on the amount of sunlight they're getting, they can produce a flower which is emphasis on the fact that you really shouldn't pick these plants or poach them. They take a long time to regenerate their populations. Now they're suffering a lot from deer in a lot of areas of the eastern United States, but luckily around here there's enough hunting to keep deer populations in check. But this is one of the most beautiful and charming little plants you're going to find in the forest this early. And it's a welcome respite from a long dreary winter without anything alive. All right, I literally can't feel my hands anymore. This has been a lot of fun. This is something new I'm trying, so stay tuned. There might be more of these. We saw a lot of really cool things today. Again, it's very cold. In the next couple of weeks, pretty decent forecast. So plenty more on the way in terms of spring botany. We're gonna see a lot of cool stuff, so stay tuned. Thanks for joining us. And again, thank you for all your support. I appreciate it. Signing out.